All right. That's, that's like perfect timing there, Chris, as you're chugging Cheers. the coffee there. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Mm. Welcome to the water cooler. This is a this is a rare episode for us because we got well, first off, we got two guests, two really smart guys, uh, Jake Kinder and Michael uh, Reese are gonna be jumping on with us just in just a few minutes here. Uh, but Chris and I are actually both traveling. We're both in hotels right now, as you guys can see by the cheesy uh, curtains behind both of us right now. Um, but you know, we're thrilled. We're thrilled to be on. You know, be uh, be put on tonight's show because this is a topic that is talked about at, at nauseum in the groups that people obsess over. And we've got two practitioners who have built an incredible business uh, in real estate. You know, I, the numbers are staggering. Chris will share with you in just a moment here. And uh, they're really going to talk about the X's and O's of how to, you know, lead gen and how to convert uh, the leads you're getting online and offline into real business. And that's, um, you know, that's something that's, you know, every week we have guests on like this, but this is something that I think people really, really want to hear, Chris. So on that note, uh, if you guys are on Twitter right now. Yeah, let me stop you really quick, Jimmy, really okay. quick. Yeah. What I what I love, let me give some stats. I don't. I think you should have given some stats in the opening. I didn't. You so, did the notes so, this week. The so, first time in 50 shows, Chris did the notes. And I'm, I never yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of my research. So I, I, I actually have been a fan from afar of Jay and Michael. Kinder Reese is what most of people know you guys as. Right now, your project is the National Association of Expert Advisors. And Jimmy, here's a couple stats. We'll, we'll share a couple more. They've sold more than 4,250 homes combined, 18 million in GCI, and this is Jay, 14% of market share in his, in his hometown, number two Cobalt Banker worldwide. For Michael, he broke the buyer sales record for Keller Williams uh, out of the office he worked in. Was it a million in GCI after his third year in the business? And he's never made less since. And what I love is that he's chilling on a couch with a hat on on a Wednesday night talking to us because people that know how to run a business know how to also, you know, do the things that, you know, are not so businessy. So to get these guys in this environment, you know, not at the conference, not in the coaching call setting is exciting for me. And those statistics speak for themselves, Jimmy. That's insane. And they're mm -hmm. not the oldest people that we've ever talked to. You know, this growth that's been exponential has happened over six to seven years total which, you know, there's people that have been watching that are watching this after 30 years haven't yeah. seen the kind of growth these guys have in five or six. So I'm pumped, you know, massive lead gen and exponential growth with two guys that have actually done it. Uh, and I'll let you go from there, Jimmy. What's cool. up with the housekeeping? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so housekeeping. Uh, if you're on Twitter right now, you can follow us on the hashtag pound water cooler. And what I want to hear from the audience tonight, Chris, is, you know, tweet to us what are some of your bigger challenges or questions you have around the topic of lead generation for your business? Because we're definitely going to be asking Jay and Michael throughout the show, you know, some and, and really have them, you know, try to provide some insight and some uh, expertise on the problems you guys are having with your business. And also, if you're on Facebook right now, uh, share the link to the show. Uh, you know, tell uh, your friends on Facebook that uh, they can jump on the water cooler right now if they want to learn no, about Jimmy, real, real quick, Jimmy, real quick. You have to be specific yeah. there. Our audience appreciates it. Please tweet or share this yes. on Facebook with a link to the show, you guys. I'm learning about exponential growth and massive lead generation on Pound Water Cooler. You guys sharing that helps our show kind of bubble up a little bit. So we really do cool. appreciate that. Can I get the first question, Jimmy, just since I did the yep. notes? Let's okay. go. So I'm gonna uh, no, I'm gonna start off. Okay. And I'm gonna go to Jay Kinder. And what I want to know, Jay, is uh, and Michael, I want you to answer this from your perspective. Take us back to being that person that never did a lead, never got a lead in real estate. Decided that you wanted to get leads. How do you get from no leads to a consistent stream of leads? Take us back to the first thing you did. Yeah. That gave you a consistent stream of people to talk to. Yeah, great question. And we, we get that question an awful lot. And I think the there's one thing that I would say that, that that everyone who's been successful has done that we've coached, that we've met, that we've mentored, under mentored, that we've mentored. And it's the first thing you have to do is you have to go after the free leads first. Because if you don't go after for sale by owners expires, and I know every market in America right now doesn't have any FISBO and expires. I already know what you're thinking. But there are some expires. There are some FISBOs. And that's what makes it hard to grow a business to, to attack a market in a challenging in a market that's going great because there's not as many of the free opportunities. Because there's only a handful of really low-cost, 
free lead generation opportunities out there. And if you don't take advantage of those, if you don't take advantage of crushing open houses and figuring out a way to meet as many people face to face as you can for free, then you won't have the money to invest in your business to go after lead generation. So I think the you know, and, and the other thing with that is too is if you cut your teeth on people that say no, 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 you learn how to handle objections and you learn how to really handle um, the difficult clients that when you start spending money on lead generation that you're going to actually encounter in your business that you that you you know if you've been getting a lot of business by referral and you have a large sphere of influence or whatever it is you haven't had to really mm -hmm. seriously compete so you know you you know this is just one of the things that you know it's a fundamental we call it an oil well I mean it's it's one of those things that you want pumping in your business at all times and then you want to move to the next oil well and it, so for us, I think that would be the way I would describe the, the success path. Let me, let me explain that one, Jimmy. I love that, Jay. I think what it is is people want to start on step two. And yeah. you can't start on step yeah. two. Step one is building a foundation so that you can feed your family, pay your bills, pay your mortgage. And, and you're saying, Jay, the quickest path to that in real estate is probably the quickest path in most businesses is rolling up your sleeves and doing some freaking work, right? Yeah. And... So the point is, if you're willing to knock on the doors and do the open houses, when you get to level two, which is what the people watching tonight want to do, you'll be great at it. It'll actually be kind of simple compared to level one. So why, why do you think so many people go straight to level two, Mike? I'll, I'll throw it to you because, you know, I know that level one isn't sexy, but I think most people that get into a business, they know that, like, you know, the first year is going to be an example. So talk, talk a little bit about that, Michael, in your perspective. You know, why aren't the people watching tonight, they're on a Google Plus Hangout, live on Twitter, tweeting and shit, why aren't they willing to use elbow grease in your, in your opinion? Well, I think fundamentally um, a lot of them are, are, it's their experience, you know what I mean? So, you know, the experiences they've had in the past, for us, the, the a lead by definition is, um, the process to identify somebody who's um, a potential customer for your service. And so people, they, they don't understand um, the fundamental principles that go into a lead. So they don't really consider an expired or FISBO a lead, just fundamentally. So they, they see an expired, they see a FISBO. They don't want to go and really do the things which is hone their skills, if you will, to, and that's what it takes to convert those leads because – Unfortunately, leads don't mean anything if you can't convert them. So, you know, having leads does not translate anything into making money. There's more skills that have to. I, I'd much rather get 10 leads and convert five of them than to have to generate 100 leads to convert five because ultimately it's the person with the unlimited marketing budget that wins the game. So um, it's not the best agent. It's the one with the most clients, and you really truly get an unfair advantage. I'll tell you one thing. I would hate to get really good at setting expired appointments to then go out on them and compete with Jay and lose the listing because I would waste a bunch of time prospecting on the phone, driving to houses to then not have the total package. So it's not about just your lead generation. It's the skills that fundamentally will help you convert those leads into actual transactions. And I think the reason why they won't do the low cost, no cost shoestring budget is because they're not willing to get their, to, to, to hone their craft. And, you know, people see people at the end of the process, but, you know, you meet Jay at 27 when he's number one in the world for Caldwell Banker, but he'd been selling real estate for nine years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you have to put your 10,000 hours in to become an expert. And, and ultimately what happens is I believe it's not about um, um, investing in leads. It's investing in conversion at the beginning because you already have leads. And what, where those Skills. leads are, is, yeah, those leads, you, you already have leads. Leads are the people in your community that have their home for sale by owner or people who have their home for sale that didn't sell. So those are free leads, as we call them. You just then have to go in and go convert those. And then when you go yeah. to step two, you actually have the revenue and the profitability to start investing. And it's at that point yeah. um, um, <laughs> you can't randomly nail boards together. You can't. You have to have a plan. You have to have clarity. And um, unfortunately, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get to level we'll get to level two. But uh, Jimmy, I think that's huge because you say this every time we have people that have had a lot of success on, is that underneath the hood is just a lot of hard work, right, Jimmy? Well, yeah, and I think I think you quoted uh, Michael about uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, the ten thousand hours to become an expert. And when you talk about like this idea of crafting your your skills or sharpening your axe. 
I, want, you know, I'm, I'm curious for you guys right now, for people who are watching who are in this position where their sales skills aren't that good. Right, and it's it may be hard to admit that. What are some of the you know what are some of the little, little things that you are seemingly obvious that you guys are doing at that sort of first level to help improve it? Because if you go through that process, it's incredibly easy to get discouraged, right? So how do you sort of measure where you're at right now, and how do you sort of you know make those small little changes to, well, to help and, improve? And it? I got it, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Jay, and I'll ask it a different way. Like if somebody comes in and they're they're not doing anything right, what's the first week look like? Is that kind of what you mean, Jimmy? Yeah, basically. Yeah, the, you know, there there's there's no first of all, you the in order for you to win a client in any situation, you have to be able to articulate your value. You have to, and the challenge in real estate for us is how do we make our value visible? How do we differentiate ourselves from Every other agent in the market, even including our top, you know, our you know number one competitor. And you know, I think I had a huge advantage at um, the number one competitor. And again, I had 14% market share. I still have about 10 or 11% market share. I haven't worked in my business in three years in Lawton. I now live in in Frisco, Texas. But the the reason that I was able to build the market share that I was was because I had a great competitor that I went against every single day that made me better. They're the top. They're in the top ten. You can look them up today. Pam, Mary, and Barry Zersky. They're in the top ten in the world for Remax. They do six hundred something deals a year. They've got about eighteen percent market share, and I competed with them every single day, every day for my entire career. And that having to be able to differentiate myself from and and really what it was more important was it wasn't about me. It's about the process. You know, having a proven, repeatable system to sell your home for up to eighteen percent more than the methods of traditional real estate agents allowed me to have a process that added value to the experience for the consumer and it differentiated me from my number one competitor because if you know normally I would just say well look at me I sell 400 homes I got proof right I mean that's the number one thing that makes people buy is that if they see proof but when you got a competitor selling 600 homes that doesn't work so well, we, well, we Jay, Jay, I, 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 I I'm sorry to cut you off but I actually as you're saying that I, how would you compete against Jay Right. If I'm if yeah. I'm selling 20 homes a year and this guy rolls up selling 400 or in this case 4,000, like Great how question. do you me what's the messaging there, right? Yeah. So, so it's intimidating. Yeah. What is the value that what is the value that you bring the, to the table that truly differentiates you that adds so much value to the consumer experience that they should hire you above your competitor? And for us, what we've determined, and I, I believe where the real estate industry, what we wholeheartedly believe where the real estate industry is going is is the average agent sells six homes a year. The average agent only has you know, uh, 90 hours of, of coursework before they become a licensed agent. We need to differentiate ourselves from the average agent. That's why we created NAEA. We want to be positioned as expert advisors. If you go sit and talk to your doctor, he, whatever it is that he tells you, if you, you know, no different than if it's a police officer who's got a badge and a gun, whatever they tell you to do, you just do. And that's the positioning that you want when you get into the listing. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle. You want to be positioned as an expert when you arrive. You don't want to chase. You want to attract. But mm -hmm. if you know if you're fa find yourself face to face with someone and you can't differentiate, what is the value that you bring to the table? You have to bring to the table staging. You have to bring to the table pre inspection. You have to bundle and package services and make it easy for the seller. You have to give them clarity and as much of a, as much certainty on the timeline as you possibly can. But before all of that, you have to have authority. So if you come in and you don't have any authority and you don't have any credibility and you're competing to get someone who has a little bit of success in their business, you're already at a disadvantage and, and that typically ends up re in reduced commission to get the deal. And that's, I'm just not in a position where I feel comfortable going into a position, into a competitive you know, environment to, again, to get a listing and um, want to lose. I, I don't want to, yeah. I hate losing, hate losing. Yeah. So yeah. How, do we, how do we articulate that value? And create a defining gap between us and every other real estate agent, and that's what that's what we build. That's how we do it, and that's really the, I don't know any other way to do it other than to do it this way. Yeah, I think that I think the quote there, Jimmy, is there's no better marketing or lead generation strategy than actually just selling a shitload of homes, right? Like he recognized that the person that's the top of my market now that they're there, what they're doing is they're advertising that they're there. I'm selling 600 homes a year. If I were if I were going up against Jay, though, there is there's always a way to can, you know. Can, th th go ahead. Can I tell you the problem with uh, step one right now that people don't even know it's a problem they don't know they have? Please. The problem the problem is is that when I was calling expireds in 2003, everyone had home phone numbers. Now they have cell phones, mm -hmm. and 
the problem that to answer um, your question earlier is you know why do people not do it is because they don't find it successful and it's because just so that everybody understands your your success with expireds and fisbos is elastic to the ability to get the contact information and so we struggled and actually hit a low spot um, where you know we used to get maybe eight well back in the day Jamie and you had this conversation the other day we just used to look up the numbers then we would have these companies that would give us access to the numbers and um, all companies data isn't the same and so you know right now we're getting email addresses cell phone numbers um, the more you know the more information you can get the person who has the contact data on a, on a, on a homeowner that nobody else has then obviously you're not competing for that person so let's say there's 116 expireds in my marketplace and we're all going to the same guy down the street to buy um, expired data and we're all getting you know 20 percent 25 percent what we found is there is an actual method where you can get um, you know a hundred two hundred percent more data on an address in today's world of technology mm -hmm. and it's it's those types of resources I showed Jay this morning we literally got email addresses for every expired that expired today with an email address you can go do retargeting on Facebook yeah, you yeah. can do perfect audience so now they're seeing your branded impressions they're seeing your postcard in the mailbox mm -hmm. so well, Mike, there's Michael what you're saying what, there go ahead, yeah. I think what's what's just interesting is that what you're saying there is like the the game sort of won before it even starts because if you if you if you're doing a lot of research up front like you're saying here before you pick up the phone and call like that like you're you already have a just a distinct advantage by doing something like that and I'm actually curious if you if you have any recommendations on sources because we're still on step one obviously here recommendations on sources to actually find email addresses cell phone numbers yeah we we you use we use leads today. And and they they um, leads today they provide us with, I mean they give us the Facebook handle, the Twitter handle, the LinkedIn yeah. handle, the yeah. cell phone number, every contact, the payoff, the sales price. Here, here's what this says. This is this is what people you know in the web at large would call big data, and mm. what, and it's things that people aren't taking advantage of because the information's out there. It's really about grabbing it. I, I know Red X and Vol like Mojo and Vulcan Six and. There's like 15 different companies, Leads Today, where you can get the data. I think what really the key here, Jimmy, is will you make the calls? Like we, we believe in the future, at least if you read the book, Jimmy. Did you read the book? But, 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 <laughs> but, 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 the, but the fact is, is that all that data is not equal. It, yeah. It, the, no, I, I, I agree. Because like we were getting, listen, when I, when I, I think what's interesting is the web evolves. And if you're not playing, you don't evolve with it. Right, mm -hmm. and that—that's what I've learned from you guys, and just the shit I've been doing for five or six years. If you're not trying, you'll never be good. If you Learn like you live forever. I mean, because like for me, it's like you know, in the past, an email was like shit. If I could just get email, opt in, go build a huge list. Our clients, we could get them 150 leads, 200 leads, but they'd rather have 20 with more data. I agree, Michael. Name, phone. Email, time frame for selling. What do you think your home's worth? Are you selling it soon? I'd rather have that data from eight people than an email address from eight. Mortgage, we're, getting, we're, getting more, we're getting mortgage payoff, last sales price, all of that right there presented in the yeah. dialer when we're calling them. So we can have a really good conversation, and so we used to spend we used to spend an hour trying to gather all this information, going and pulling tax roll data, trying to determine what their mortgage was. I mean, it was a lot of hard work back in the day, and I hate to say back in the day because it makes me sound old, but it it was back in the day. Things have evolved, but you got to keep evolving. It's like what you just said, Chris. It's if you don't keep evolving and you keep learning and growing, then I mean, there's there's things that are changing every day. I mean. We couldn't get Facebook, and I mean, there was a there was a tool. What was that tool, Mike? We had for a while that was that allowed you to get the Facebook and the Twitter handle. Oh, oh man, Pipple. There's a lot of stuff. P I P L. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't get all the Twitter and and uh, Facebook handles. Do they have? Do they get that now? Jimmy, what is the one that, that Dan uses that rakes that stuff in? It's like a it's a third. Oh, party. I don't, I can't even think of that. But you know, there's like well, you have things. There's if you, actually if you guys go to ProductHunt.co. There's actually every week they got a tool out there that actually. Hold on a second. You gotta say that again. I gotta write that down. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's I'm here it's, to learn. 
<laughs> yeah, it's ProductHunt.co. I plug these guys every week. We got the we got the founder coming on the show in a couple weeks. ProductHunt.co. But they actually have every week. I see a new tool that you plug in someone's email address and yeah. they scan the social web to find all the information they can scour, not just Twitter handles and Facebook and, links, and but like obviously because a lot, else, people, what a lot of people think that's weird and creepy and scary and then And you know what I have to say about that? You need to either eat or be eaten. I Let mean, me tell you something. <laughs> then we had a guy with they did it. We did an interview, and let me tell you something. I got an OU shirt on. I didn't go to OU because I just didn't go to college. Uh, um, I got into real estate on accident, and it turned out to work out all right for me. But that's not what I would suggest for my kids. Um, but we had a guy that went through an interview, did the research, found out that you know saw saw in one of our videos that I was wearing an OU shirt. Sends an email follow up saying Boomer sooner, and. You know, in the inner, in, in, if you're not doing this, if you can't c connect with people on their level, I mean, you have all the tools in the world to connect with anybody on anything. Find mm -hmm. something of common interest. It's called building rapport. It's not something that's rocket science. We all know about it. We've all heard about it, and we all do it well. I mean, what's, as real estate professionals, we do it well. What Jay? Would you say it's it's never been easier to build rapport before you talk to someone than it is today? Oh, it's it's ridiculously ten times easier than it used to be. And, 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 look, and look at our relationship. That's exactly what we talked about before the call. Yeah. Like, I, I really feel like I know you guys. I want to. I want to pivot and ask a really specific question. It's from the list, Jimmy. I'll get. I'll get the show back on track. All right. I, I, one thing I've learned about internet lead gen. So let's go to step two. You know, we got the basics. Now we want to start doing some internet lead gen. And I know you guys probably get asked all the time. Should I do Craigslist? Should I do Zillow? Should I do Boomtown? Should I do Zerple? Should I do pay per click? Should I do Facebook ads? There are so many ways you can go when it comes to like trying to get people into your funnel. What I wanted to ask is a little different. I want you to tell us about a time that you guys, you know, came up with a freaking big idea to do massive lead gen and it worked. You know, there's there's a lot of stories out there where people do offline campaigns, online campaigns. You guys are laughing. Do you mind sharing? <laughs> what was the big idea that generated massive leads, and is it recreatable? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there, you know, it, it you took me back in time, and I think the, the what I remember was me and Mike used to fly around the country going to events, and I think it's uh, yeah, we talked about it before the call started, and and always learning. You guys are out there doing your thing, always growing, getting better. We used to fly all over the country, learning from everybody, anybody. We paid anybody who would take our money. I think, mm -hmm. and. And we used to we get in the plane and we get in the airplane and we would we would debate who would have the most leads before we would land because then you know when you land all the leads come in on your phone. Yeah. And you know this was back a long time ago when it was a, when that was a big deal. But you have such a huge advantage if you're able to generate leads. And and I don't know, Mike. I know leads are you know this this may be more up your alley than uh, than I know you're thinking of two or three things. I'm sure that we've crushed in terms of lead generation, but. I mean, we've generated, we still do generate thousands, thousands of leads mm -hmm. every single day and, and not, not, not just day, in, month, month, month. I'm sorry, yeah, in, in a <laughs> month from our real estate businesses, yeah. And, and, and I think what we've kind of gone to, um, we've learned over, over time is, is it's not now about the, how many leads can you generate, it's about how do you really generate a quality lead because mm -hmm. you, what we don't, we get drunk on leads. I mean, I've got, I know real estate agents that have bought you know, a thousand dollar a month. They bought every thousand dollar a month tool in their market because they didn't want anyone else to get them. Yet they don't even convert, set any appointments from the all from any of them. I mean, I talked to a guy mm -hmm. yesterday. I kid you not. The guy's making probably two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. But his the number of appointments set last this last month in March was four appointments set from twelve hundred leads. That's mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? Like if we get we get so caught up on the idea of generating leads. It's not hard. What do mm -hmm. sellers want? They want to know what the price of their home, uh, the home value is. That's that's those are easy yeah. to generate those leads. What do buyers want? They want selection. They want to search for homes. You mm -hmm. provide that portal, run an ad anywhere you want to run it. You're going to generate leads. It's easy to do that part. The mm -hmm. part that's hard is how do you cultivate? How do you, this is the question I want everybody it, to ask it, themselves. It's not even a lead though because they weren't searching right. for you. That's that's right. Exactly. That's where I was going, Mike. And I know, and I'm gonna let you have it after after this one comment because it's about attract, not chase. We are all we. These are not leads. If they want to know what their home's value is, and they didn't ask you what you think your home's value, their home's value is, 
then it's not really a lead. If they're not asking you to help them with the purchase of a home, then it's not really a buyer lead. It's someone that's searching and we trick them into giving them our contact information. You have to attract, not chase. So the question becomes not how do I generate more leads, more leads, more leads. It's how do I position myself as an expert in the eyes of this person? How do I add so much value that they're willing to write a check and pay my fee to do business with me? How do I position myself as an authority? That's the real question we have to ask ourselves because let me tell you something. If Zillow decides to flip the switch and say, let's just connect all these buyers and sellers to hell with real estate agents, we're all mm -hmm. fucked. It's over because they have the buyers. They have the sellers. Why do they need us? Can you articulate why a buyer should pay you a 3% fee up front before they go out and look at homes with you? If you can't articulate that value, then you're at risk of being out of business. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have to focus on is how do we position? And it's not – you said something earlier. It's not about – you don't have to sell 300 homes to be featured on the cover of a magazine. This mm -hmm. is the first thing that we created. This is just something that we have that goes out to buyers and sellers, and it's just a magazine. It's if I if I've been on the cover of a magazine, I have thereby have more authority instantly than if I wasn't yeah. on the cover of a magazine. Anybody can have this. Hey, so, let me ask you this: Did you use Cloud Mag from HP? Because Jimmy, I'm a big fan of Matt. It's Mag yeah. Cloud. Mag Mag, sorry, sorry, Jay, write that one down too, dude. I'm telling you, I'm, Mag, I'm on it. Mag Cloud, which Mag is Cloud. Jimmy, talk about it for thirty seconds. I think it's sure. a, it's something well, people want. Yeah, There's so many points that Jay just yeah. brought up there, and I, and I want to get Mike, Michael's thought on it too, or Mike's thought on it. But well, Mag no, we, Cloud, st we still need the specific massive lead. I know, I, I know, I, I know how Jay sort of danced around that. We want to get yeah. to that. Uh, but um, but Mag Cloud is a so listen. If you're not featured on a magazine, shit, you can create your own magazine through Mag Cloud. It's like it's like four dollars a copy. It's ridiculously cheap. We're going to talk about in this in last call, Chris, different sources you can actually outsource to create visual content for you. I'm not going to give it away because we'll cover at the end of the show here. But it is a it, what Jay was just saying there, this idea of attracting consumers to you. Well, if you can publish yourself self in, a, in a magazine, then you know it gives you some authority. If you sold no homes, publish yourself in a magazine and bring it to your next listing appointment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least you look more important than you do otherwise. Well, no, right, I think cool. I, I think it's even you know for for these guys. Listen, Jimmy, yeah. let me give them props for a second. They, Twitter's exploding. If you guys could tweet the link again and say how great the show is, we might break a record. There's more than 300 people watching live, you guys. It's pretty awesome. nice. You know, on a Wednesday night at nine o'clock. So not bad. Thank, we, haven't offended, we haven't offended that many people, and that's great. No, yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get there. More accurately, Chris has an offended. <laughs> hey, listen, <movie. laughs> I'm drinking a Ducati and I'm in Sacramento, yeah. so we may get a little loose tonight. Keep uh, going. But no. <laughs> I don't, Jimmy, I don't even know where I was heading with that. I don't know where you are, but I, I want to get. I, I want to turn the corner here because Mike, I want to get. I want to yeah, get. Mike, let Mike tell a story about a massive lead ge generate. You know how? Well, let's, yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah. Let's just. Okay, let's, I'll let's, tell you a true story. So, right. um, you know, me and Jay have spent time in the basement with Dan Kennedy, some of the top marketers. Every other week, we've been on the phone for the last month and a half for an hour, two hours. Two Sundays ago, I was on the phone for three hours while on spring break with Jay Abraham sitting on my father-in-law's golf cart talking about the same stuff we're talking about mm -hmm. and at the end of the day what I think we've come to the conclusion is it's a it's a fully integrated um, marketing system like you can't just generate like a hundred leads you would rather you know Dan, Dan Kennedy's magnetic marketing when you market to good, generate a lead you know you you have more than one touch right it's um, bullets and cannonballs show up like nobody else so I'll just give you a perspective. Let, let me give you the life cycle of what a lead would do in our world, right? So, guy's thinking about buying or selling his home. And let's just say, for instance, selling his home. He sees an ad. It's, I want to know what my home's worth. He lands on the landing page. One or two things are going to happen. He's going to fill out the form to, with his address and move on to the next step, or he's not. If he doesn't, they say that the, 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 the new, the new, um, Going forward, it's that cookie. The minute he lands on that page, you can bury that cookie and follow the unconverted person. Because if you want to email someone, they got to open the email, read the email. I was just on three different websites and you know getting followed around everywhere. So there's there's the ability to be getting impressions that don't cost you nothing from everybody that visits your website and get authority because the consumer doesn't know. So that's just one thing, right? So you have all that you have your funnel like this life cycle. But if a guy goes through that step. In our lead generation right now, we generated 800 and something. We had our uh, business strategy this Monday and Tuesday for our real estate brokerage. In, 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 in this previous month of March, we generated 800 plus just seller leads, not buyer, just seller. Now, those sellers are in different, in different stages. 
-hmm. if you fortune's always made up made in the follow-up and you have to have a nurture sequence that is highly relevant content so if someone wants to know what their homes worth we we give them recent sold data on homes um, that affect their value so they get an email that says hey your homes um, uh, there's been a home sale in your neighborhood it might have affected your home price so it's not just generating the lead it's then communicating with that lead over time because there's there's nothing that's in your control when you call a lead it's not in your control if they're motivated or not but your return on investment could be increased significantly if you have a system to nurture that lead so that over time you know when that person's motivated and it's that that allows you the ability to be able to afford to spend more we yeah. generated a lead where the person wasn't looking for Jay and I but mm -hmm. then Jay's, Jay basically created a marketing um, um, offline strategy so once the lead comes in online they're asked a question um, what is the ideal time frame that you want to have the home sold by if they meet a certain criteria of price point location mm -hmm. area then we basically trigger an offline strategy, and I'll let Jay talk about the uh, the bomb strategy. I can show but him. It, it, yeah, he can show you. So you have to invest in converting that lead, and not every lead is the same. If it's mm -hmm. a lead that is 12 months down the road, what right. we do here's what here's the here's the secret sauce. We augment every buyer lead. If I'm using Boomtown, or if I'm using Commission Inc. or Zerpel or any of that stuff. I'm augmenting every buyer lead to see if they own a home in my neighborhood. So we take every buyer leads email and we run it through leads today and it tells us if they own a home in our area and if they do own a home in our area, it gives us the payoffs, the loan amount, well, and we follow up with that buyer lead as a seller. Yeah. yeah. Does that make I love sense? That. No, it does and here's some data. Well, Chris, what's the data behind that? Yeah, the, well, the, the data is actually pretty powerful. It's that about 33.3% <laughs> of people that are buyers need to sell. And, yeah, and that, num that number can move up or down. I, I think that's a huge, huge best practice. Michael, thank you for sharing that. Seriously, dude. Because, like, yeah. you know, there, there's the, the key there, Jimmy, is, like, using big data, you know, to identify that the buyer owns a home. It's not really that hard. Like, the, the people watching this, they know if a neighborhood's a rental neighborhood or if a neighborhood's you know, a neighborhood well, where people own, so they just need to get a physical address. Let me say one other thing, Michael. You mentioned something we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, Jimmy, with the guy from Ad Stage. He called it tagging the shark. Retargeting. I think people may have missed that tip, Michael. Like, you can now follow up with 100% of your traffic, right? You, you can't follow up with 100% of your traffic through email, right? You can't, you can't call 100% of your traffic, but through cookies and things like AdRoll and Facebook's Ad Exchange Network and all these things, you can now follow up with 100% of your traffic. And that's a big, big deal. And when you follow up with people that have already been on your site and you're advertising your site, if you guys look at some of the data from AdRoll, the data goes through the roof. The effectiveness of yeah. the marketing is through the roof and the other best practice he gave is like you know the, through the Facebook power editor you can take your buyers and sellers Jimmy get them in a CSV put them into Facebook's power editor for ads and now get ads in front of everybody that you know in the last three months was a buyer yeah. or seller lead the, these are huge best practices so well, I didn't, that, yeah. that, and, and the, here, here's the here's the part here's the bit worst part about it Chris and Jimmy and Jay is that there's a technology gap and even though we're using all these um, terms that me and you have the ability and the tenacity to figure out most yeah. agents don't so you have That's to have somebody benefit. you have let to have somebody who will do it for you yep. yeah the, the, let, let me give it I mean for those of you who have been following you know you guys for you know Chris and Jimmy for so long you guys are at a huge advantage because let me tell you something 99.9% .9 of the real estate agents out here aren't getting this kind of information. I mean, this is the highest level business marketing, you know, content you could be consuming. And right. you're, if you're on the front end of this, I mean, I can tell you this. You asked about the lead gen thing, so I want to break down just the one thing. We said we generated 800 seller leads. I'm assuming yeah. not everybody on the call is generating 800 seller leads in a month. So, and it, this was less than 60 days ago, Mike, right? That we yeah. that, that you turned on the Facebook. We turned on Facebook promoted post to the home evaluation, the home evaluation, uh, unbranded home evaluation online, 
generated 200 and what was it? Something ridiculous. 232 or something like that. Yeah, 232, 232 in, in, in 24 hours. In 24 hours. Now, that's let me tell you what you don't want. You do not want 232 <laughs> leads in 24 hours. Okay? Because the first problem you have is you can't even call them all. So yeah. you're wasting money. So like the first thing we're like, well, we probably want to change the verbiage on the ad to want to know what your home is worth to mm -hmm. are you thinking of selling? Like mm -hmm. every little detail matters, but that that idea was sixty less than sixty days ago, and I'm sure you've already shared it with everybody. I'm not. Yes. That's not information you guys haven't made privy to your audience. And think how much that's already started to dissipate its ability to convert mm -hmm. since that since that's that's come out less than sixty days ago. That's how fast things are changing, and how how you have to be investing and being on the front end of this. So yeah. I commend everybody for being on the you know spending the time here tonight. If you've been here many many times as I have, I've listened to you guys. I love the content you guys are sharing. It's what we're focused on, and it's the things that are what's going to take your business to the next level. If you want to have a major breakthrough, um, this is this is just the this is what it's going to take to get there, in my opinion. Well, well there's, some, there's something you brought up there. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Jimmy. You're the I forget. Something. There, there, well, there's it's something you you brought up there, Jay, which I think is actually fundamental for our audience to understand here. Um, you know, we've been big proponents of social advertising for some time now. We just think that the futures in social advertising with all these networks out there, not just Facebook, but LinkedIn and Pinterest when they're, they're rolling out, Twitter we've been already been experimenting with. But what you just said there, I think is really, really important. In this world of advertising, when you're in the demand generation business, like because AdWords is a demand fulfillment. Someone searches for something, you're there, your advertisement fulfills whatever their needs are. Mm -hmm. in, in the social space, it's demand generation. You've got to create that thought in their mind that they may be thinking about and then get them to act on it. So you've got to be kind of thinking about updating your advertisements regularly. You've got to get great at yeah, copywriting. Let, let, let me give it a look. Yeah. Really uh, no, I, I can't believe how on the same page we are. And Jay, you know we haven't talked a lot, and I wish we had, but you know, we're building our business as well around a lot of the things that you guys are talking about. Marketing automation, not looking for volume of leads, looking for people that actually are going to do something. Facebook advertising. Here's a real world example. Think about this, Jay. Have you guys ever done any like uh, Fourth of July, you know, things to do for Fourth of July, things to do for Christmas, places to go for Halloween? Like, you, do you guys have kids at all? Yeah. So like, I search for that stuff. So if it's if for example Easter, right? I'm gonna search places to go to do Easter egg hunting in Brooklyn, right? I'm gonna probably search that, and Google could probably tell you that I'm gonna search that about six days before freaking Easter. I don't want to curse when I'm talking about Easter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and so so if I'm a Facebook advertiser, which you guys are advocating, and we're big proponents of. By the way, the whole world bitching about Facebook right now charging which I love but like if I know 10 days before Easter I can get my article about places to go for Easter egg hunting in Brooklyn in front of the whole city before they even search it on Google I believe that I can eliminate them ever doing that search mm -hmm. and to me that is a whole new world that we're living in yeah. when you think about people search for X but before, and that's what's happening on Facebook. Before they think about selling, or before they've actually said I'm going to sell, you bring that thought to their consciousness. That's a big, big deal, as yeah. opposed to waiting. The thing that I love that you said the most tonight, Jay, was attract, don't chase. To me, pay per click through Google is kind of chasing people. Is yeah, that not fair to say? Everything we've talked about is really, is really still chasing, right? So. So like you know, Mike talked about like when he he said something that's important, and this is this is a principle I want everybody to take away today. It's you fire bullets then cannonballs, right? So mm -hmm. there's one thing I, we're not going to tell you to do is we're not going to tell you to ma mail this giant box right to a sell every seller in a neighborhood because I promise you that 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 box is going to be very expensive. Okay, but what you would do is you would mail a who's thinking of selling their home postcard, and you'd mail that to the entire neighborhood, and then the ones that meet the criteria you determine as a qualified, meaning I'm selling, because buying a home is a process, not an event. Mm -hmm. They, If we catch them and they're not in the mode of I'm ready to sell right now, highly motivated, which is what we're talking about doing in many cases, is we're, we're, we're catching them early in the process, which is something we couldn't do before as easily as we can now with social media. So yeah. if you do that, how do we, how do we maximize 
that relationship. And it, that's where the uh, now you have the ability to attract, not chase. If you want to stand out, you, you need to be able to differentiate yourself. If you have written a book, then you're going. These are things we can all do today. Like you guys were just mentioning, the magazine tear sheet. You know that is something that anyone can can do. You, we do it. We do it as a part of NAEA. You get interviewed. It's um, um you know there's authority that's borrowed from being a member of the National Association of Expert Advisors, and everyone can have that. Right. That's a benefit. You can do the same thing with a book. But if you get a book in the mail. And, and all this information, no different than if you think about if you were retiring from your job in the next year and you order, you, you know, you go online and you're kind of researching any you know, old these information and somebody sends you this giant box of stuff, what's going to happen is that thing's going to hang around in your, in your house until it's time for you to really go through it. But the, all the while, you're gaining authority. You've made it through the walls of their home and it's mm -hmm. sitting on their table and then it gets moved over to this shelf. But when it's time, if you are giving them relevant content, you have authority, and you have the ability to attract, yeah. not chase. And that's where I think the major focus needs to go today. We can all generate leads. We can all engage with people online, and we can spend a lot of time doing those things. But if it's not in a way that positions us as a highly trusted, mm -hmm. a highly a high level of expertise, a trusted advisor, mm -hmm. then we're we're not going to maximize what we can attract instead of chase. And yeah. that's where we're, that's where we're focused on. Well, 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 Jay, here's what it is. How can I attract? the right people at the right time and then provide them with the information that shows that I'm an authority in the industry that I'm in. You know, that's really what this conversation has been about. That's what you guys have done for your business. Michael, I'm going to ask you guys, we do a segment called last call where we just go through some trending marketing topics throughout the week. I put it together this week. There's like seven amazing takeaways in last call, which we'll get to in a second. But, Michael, first of all, we want to have you guys back on. We usually don't have two guests, you guys. Jay, you watch the show. Michael, I don't know yeah. if you do, but Jay's, Jay's a fan. You yeah. know, ha having both of you, I feel like we should have had you guys almost individually, and, and I, want to have, I, I want to have you guys back again. But, Michael, if people right now are going, wow, these guys get it, which I know they are. We've got massive audience on Twitter. People are pumped. How can people connect with you guys to learn more? I know, Jay, you mentioned – a freebie they can get. What's the best place for people to keep in touch with you guys after tonight? Yeah, the um, you know, and we didn't even, you know, obviously we didn't even we didn't even prepare anything really. Yeah, what I would tell you to do is go to naea.com, and uh, there's a lot of free stuff you can download, videos you can watch, things of that nature. But if you're, you know, there's one in particular called the Clarity Report, and the Clarity Report is probably kind of what we're most known for. It kind of tells. It really helps you to, to get clarity on what it is that you want to accomplish in your business and um, goes through this whole process of you know, how you should differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself, how you can do that and give you, some, give you clarity. Take some time. Learn what it is that you really what's, – what's driving you about your business. Um, that would be the one thing that I would, I would say that you should do if you're going to do anything. Um, but you can go to NAEA.com and find a ton of free stuff and, and um, you know, just kind of follow through those links. And if you're interested um, you know, uh, in joining the association or whatever, I'm sure there's a place to do that there as well. Yeah. Michael, Michael, what's the best place to connect with you? People are on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? I couldn't find you. I saw at Jay Kinder. What is your Twitter <laughs> handle, my friend? My, my Twitter handle is Y Reese. Got it. W H Y R E E S E. Yep. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for being on N A E A dot com. They also do an event, you guys, in Dallas. Is that right? I don't want to yeah. misquote that. Yeah, it's that's called, correct. It's called the Exponential Growth Summit. And if there's one thing I've learned from this conversation, is that these are not people that waste your time. You know, I honestly, Jay, I don't know you guys that well. Like I said, I'm a fan from afar. But I really do wish we could go for another hour. We're trying to stick know, to the right? format. And we're definitely getting you guys back on. So go to NAEA.com, you guys, right now. Download the Clarity Report. How about this? If you guys get 100 downloads of the report, we'll bring you back on in a couple months to go for round two. Is that cool? You got it, yeah. man. Sounds great. Awesome. Right, guys. Thanks for being on tonight. Right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.